dance now. <laughs> This program contains graphic material, including offensive language. Viewer discretion is advised. Everybody else is inside cleaning. That's not fair, bro. It's not, but hey, things happen. You're really a cunt. I, so I am. If I don't want to clean, I'm not cleaning. And I didn't clean, right? There you go. Respect me. Do you think I'm being respected? I mean... I feel like I respect you. Yeah, of course you do, but everybody else, like... It's a respect thing. I know a lot of people in this house look at me, like, sensitive and stuff like that, but if I'm not knocking somebody the fuck out, then this is how, how it gets me. And I have anxiety, you feel me? Mm. I distance myself right now because I couldn't even deal with the attitude in there. I came here, I came here to get the fuck away from the drama. Going on back home. Ruckus and Duchess. This was the first of many a magical moment for myself and a lot of the actors and a lot of the supporters that came in to support this is my first theater premiere ever which is big and I'm, oh my god i can't wait for us to go bigger and better on the next venture and all i need you guys to do right now is go to watchactv.com and subscribe the more subscribers the more we can do thank you so much god bless for a nigga right now Break that back, I'ma fuck you to the ground High off this eye, I'ma give you this cock Buzzing like a gun, let me show you what I got A big booty bitch said something, ayy Make it broke, nigga spend money Shake, shake that ass Make a nigga spend on it Shake, shake that ass Baby, bounce that ass Now shake that ass Make a nigga cream on it Shake, shake that ass Baby, bounce down on it Drop it down for the band Drop it, make it needs no hands I know you, that song just gets me every time. What's good, everybody? We are live, and as always, we have our first lady, D. Rashawn. We got Bubs the God. We have myself, the voice of TTB. And today we have a very, very special guest. Okay, he's a writer. He's a director. He's a producer and the founder of A Connection TV. Now, listen, since 2005, this man has entertained over 64 million people worldwide. Listed as one of the black icons of the decade by the G-List, winner of six NYPS awards, which include the coveted, the coveted network of the year. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Wesley Henderson onto the panel. What's going on? <laughs> That was a very nice intro. Wow, thank you. I appreciate that. I mean, when when somebody puts in the work, you got you, you got to salute them properly, okay? Respect. Now, yes. Now we're going to get this um interview started off with the one and only Miss D Rashawn. Do your thing, D. Look, I don't think I qualified to be talking to you. I didn't think oh, the predictions stop. was going to stop. Oh, stop. <laughs> Welcome. Look, we got we're going to have fun. Okay. And we gonna, you know, let's get into some softwares. Can you take us back through a little bit of your childhood? What is like with your parents, siblings? Give us whatever you want to give us when it comes to your childhood. I will try to give you the cliff note version because I've been on this earth for a very long time, and my childhood is 
extensive and detailed, but I will say I was, or yeah, I was the typical gay boy uh, that lived in the hood and living in the hood, you cannot be gay. Um, I'm from Hartford, Connecticut, Bowles Park. I know probably a lot of you probably don't know anything about Bowles Park, but that is the hood. It definitely was back then, and I think it still is. Uh, but back then, you just could not be gay. And uh, when I was a tender age of five, I remembered that I thought that Carlos from across the parking lot was so fine. And I wanted to figure out how I could get to know him a little better at five. And so my mom caught me trying to do something strange for a piece of change with this boy. And she was like, what is this? You can't do this. No, 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 no. And so from then, I knew that being gay was just not OK. And so fast forward, I am trying my best not to play with Barbie dolls, trying my best not to, you know, uh, watch Rainbow Bright and be in the girly stuff and trying to, you know, do the boys things and play football and basketball and all that stuff. But it just wasn't for me. And then when I got to uh, middle school, high school, I discovered that being creative was the way that in my hood, you didn't necessarily have to be gay to be creative. You could just be one of those guys that's just into the arts and that was my way to like escape trying to be straight and you know trying to get people off my back from being gay and then i moved and the rest is history i got really into being creative really into the arts loving music loving dancing loving drawing i'm an artist as well um and i've basically touched everything in the entertainment world and I think I do it pretty well. The only thing I can't do is sing or play an instrument. So everything else, I'm good. Okay. Well, yeah. you said growing up, um, being a typical gay boy in the hood wasn't accepted. How does it feel going from that gay boy in the hood and homosexuality not being accepted to having a national pride month and pride days all over the u.s how does that feel for you honestly it never really it's not really a thing in my mind because ever since i discovered that being gay was okay which was around 16 17 i never really looked at pride as like something that i needed for myself because mm -hmm. uh, i always felt good about myself regardless of what anybody else yeah. thought which is really why you know my youtube channel came about was to spread that kind of mentality and message to all of my community uh but i think outside of myself i think it's a beautiful thing because there are a lot of individuals that don't get the that don't have the courage and the confidence to stand in their light and so um seeing a lot of people a lot of celebrities or whoever come to embrace the concept of pride i think is definitely needed i mean even in today there's still a lot of suicide rates are high for homosexuals yeah. um you know people in the lgbtq community uh trans people are getting murdered left and right so it's it's a lot still happening today but i am happy with where we're headed i should say yeah. so what would you tell that five-year-old wesley that is looking at you today who happens to be on a mama ipad you know the kids like the phones or their 16 year old Wesley, who comes upon you and sees you throughout your different platforms, what would you tell that 16 year old Wesley who might be afraid to be who they are and accept themselves? There's gonna come a day where you're gonna look in the mirror and be ecstatic that you are who you are. Uh, and live in that and understand that um, you can only be you and that's it. Don't try to hide. Um, don't be afraid to snap a finger. Don't be afraid to swirl that neck. Don't be afraid to say, hey, bitch, if that's what you want to do, uh, because no matter what, you're going to be okay and you're going to always be in good company. Now, what do you tell? You heard that, Bubs. Hey, bitch. You can say, you can say it, Bubs. I, hey, bitch. I'll be saying all type of shit. Shut the fuck up, crap. <laughs> Now, what do you say to somebody who's maybe on the other end of that, who's so homophobic, who can't understand how, oh my God, you're not born this way, this, 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 this. What do you say to that person who can't understand it and who might need help being taught that, hey, 
you are who you are and that's okay and i am and i am who i am and that's okay as well um i don't know it's 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 a constant conversation that i have even today i mean look at bad boys la we have people like moolah on uh, the zeus network who seems to not be able to comprehend the similarities between him being a black man and being racially profiled versus what he's actually doing on that platform and now he's talking and treating you know the people of the lgbt community so it's very interesting especially with dealing with minorities mainly black because i am black how um a lot of us or a lot of them put the blinders on with you know levels of discrimination so i just say just imagine being able or imagine living in a world where you couldn't love on your woman the way you wanted to love on your woman because yeah. you know people said that it was wrong or taboo or disgusting or you're going to hell um a lot of times straight people can't even fathom that because that's not the world we live in but just try to imagine if that's the world that you would ever want to live in and if you know people had the mental fortitude to be able to do that they would say that they would want to live in that world so i don't know it's still a constant battle though a constant one and, and it's one that's very tiring um you know what i'm gonna go into it because you are so easy to talk to now what do you say to those people because it's always been a thing where black women in the gay community we're like we're intertwined now what do we say to those people who say well you're only intertwined because black women feel like they need an accessory okay and it's not a true friendship do you think that's the case or do or why do you think we're so intertwined uh, I wouldn't, I don't know about that. I mean, from my perspective, I say that we have a lot of similarities. Um, I mean, when you look at, um, the stereotypical gay man and, you know, their femininity, we kind of mirror women. So, mm -hmm. uh, I feel like we have that ability to be able to merge between the two. Cause like, bitch, we both looking at men. We both like what we like. You know what I'm saying? Girl, that's a cute top or whatever the case may be. Okay. I think it's very easy for us to merge. Um, but there is that side of the gay community that just for whatever reason don't like dealing with women and don't like women being around them and don't want to go to women's spots. And, you know, it's like that gay versus lesbian kind of situation. Mm -hmm. I don't know why that exists, but I love women and I love being around them. My best friend of 20 some odd years is a woman. Uh, her name is Tiffany Jones. So I just, I love women. So, yeah. Okay. Okay, so let's start going into, you know, a connection. What made you create your own platform? I wanted to create a space that was accept accepting of all people. Um, my biggest quote that I've held since 2005 is um, adopting similar connections despite our differences. I say it on every mm -hmm. single video. Um, and that speaks truth to who I am as a person and who I want to entertain um, and how I feel like the world should be. Uh, similar to the question that you asked earlier, I feel like if everyone could adopt similar connections despite our differences, we'd all be okay. Um, and I didn't at the time see, see that. I, I didn't see a lot of guys who were super creative and super original um, speaking to me. Um, you know, I'm from the era of In Living Color, the Martin Lawrence show, um, Low Down Dirty Shame is my favorite movie. Um, and so it's like seeing those, you know, those, those movies and those shows, I did not necessarily see me, um, equally yoked with everybody else. So it's like, why not? You know, gay people are beautiful people, all people are beautiful mm -hmm. people. So I should be able to see that more so in entertainment. So I decided to carve out a little space in my my little self my skinny ass in my living room with that horrible wig and them flat you know no titties at the time you know acting a hot plum fool talking about what's going on how you doing bitch you know being crazy and i was just like i don't know what the fuck i'm doing but i'm about to do it anyway and sounds know, familiar you know up to <laughs> years later you know here i am so yeah Okay, what is your favorite scene or part out of Low Down Dirty Shame? Oh my God, the whole entire movie. Um, 
Jesus, 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 Jesus. Uh, I love the scene where Jada is um, saying, oh, so you want a box? Are you calling me a dog? Is that it? You know, well, ain't no space, nothing but space and opportunity here. Do you want some of this? You know, I like that scene. Um, I like the scene when Wayman gets slapped by the white dude. You know, coffee's filled with cream, but better when it's black. You know, uh, it's so many scenes from that movie. Do you like that movie? You see, I'm over here with you. Okay. We're going to be telling our age a little bit now. Okay. Yeah, we might be telling our age. Right, right. Okay, one more, because these young kids don't understand. Your favorite in love with color character. Say what now? Your favorite in love with color character. Oh, um... I don't know if I had to if I had to say a favorite, it would probably be um, Wanda. Wanda was always hilarious. Wanda, it was just every time Wanda came on the screen, I knew I was gonna laugh. Similar to um, in Martin Lawrence, my favorite character would be Shanae. Because you know, every time is without fail, I could be having a fucked up day, I could, whatever is going on. Shanae was just always hilarious, and it's mainly because uh, those caricatures were just like reminded me of women that was in my life and you know a lot of a lot of women you know get their feelings when guys you know you know characterize women uh, or whatever but it's birth from reality our reality like i know amona simone i know a couple of them i know wanda i know it's Shanene, so those are my favorite characters oh i do too oh look at look <laughs> right. that was that's my that was that when are you hear that you know it's gonna be something exactly okay so out of all of your projects that have appeared on your platform which one is your favorite and why so my baby my all-time uh baby is the mystery series um because it is the first all lgbtq you know series on my platform because i started the platform with just doing um straight com uh content because i didn't I, I feel like I, I feel like i placed myself in a box an lgbtq box and i can't escape that box mm -hmm. and you know everybody only wants me to do lgbtq content and so when i started my platform watch ACTV that was my mission was to not solely do that and to show that I could, you know, be versatile, no pun intended, and do other things, you know what I'm saying? And so uh, with that being said, the mister is my favorite and it's my favorite because um, it speaks uh, relatively relativity to everyone that watches it. And uh, it comes from my life. Um, uh, the character that I play Hayden is a mirror image of who I am as a person. Um, and then all of the other characters involved and the actors involved. It's just a beautiful piece of work. And I'm starting the Mr. Season three and the fucking script is off the chain. And I'm not just saying that because I wrote it, which I did, but it's off the fucking hook. And I can't wait. We start actually filming tomorrow. So, yeah. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Cannot wait to see that. Yeah. Yeah. Now who's your favorite actress or actor to work with and why ah. <laughs> um well see i don't know who's watching what actor or actress is watching if they are watching um uh, but i have a couple of them uh oh, jesus well from like a director's perspective or like from acting with them from a director's perspective Okay. Um, well, Bakari is a highlight. Uh, Bakari is super, super, super dope. And he receives um, commentary well, and he's able to evoke in all emotions. Bakari is in Let It Go 2 on Watch ACTV. He's in The Mister. He's in Porn and Poppin'. Um, I also uh, appreciate and adore Adrian Cannon. As an actress, she just won uh, Best Actress playing the lead. And remember, this was a short film on Watch ACTV, so shout out to her. Um, great talent. There's Tamara Stackhouse, Ashanti Harris, another two beautiful, beautiful queens that are just breathtaking and super, super talented. There's Frank Henderson. I could go down, I could go down a list of creative people and talented people that I work with. Um, Rico Castanine is another good actor. 
He's 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 challenging and he get on my motherfucking nerves sometimes, but at the same time, he is still super talented and he's hungry. So yeah. Okay, well, that was gonna be my next question. Okay. What actor or actress who you like in the, in love, maybe, but was difficult to work with and why? Like well, was- I would say I would say um I'm lucky to not have like really really difficult people to work with um but uh the most challenging would be rico because rico always wants to go a different way or wants a different angle or has a suggestion or what if we do it like this or what about this or why am i feeling this way or like is it tuesday wednesday thursday friday Saturday? like he's he's like on a 10 all the time um especially with the mister, because one of his biggest things was that he was a proud advocate for heavier or thicker people. And he wanted to make sure that um, he was portrayed in a certain light on the show. Mm-hmm. Um, and he didn't want to be categorized as just the, the funny comedian, comedic relief of the, the show because he's a thicker, you know, bigger guy, yeah. uh, which in, in hindsight just all makes sense, right? But that was never like my mission and trying to get him to understand that we were on the same page in the beginning was kind of difficult but you know uh he would have been or is or was the most challenging to her i love my rico. i love you rico we film tomorrow boy you better be ready <laughs> oh he ready <laughs> now what actor do you did you dislike working with all across I don't have any because um, I just don't work with people I don't like. And I'm a good judge of character and I just don't have time. Um, yeah. <laughs> That's the key. Yeah. Controlling your environment. Indeed. Controlling your environment. Indeed. Now let's switch over. <clears throat> so it, like, kind of was revealed to us, like, all in one that you were connected to the Circle Atlanta in a way um so can you ex- I, I see the smile already we we got we cook it with some grease y'all so what's your connection to the circle well i was brought on to be um a secondary producer um you know someone that nunu could call on um if he needed guidance or needed help with any anything um so that was my particular role and I had a hand in um, casting Tevin, Rico, a lot of people. I had a hand in the casting process. Um, so that was my involvement in the show. Um, I didn't know that the show was going to get as dramatic as it did, because like I just said previously, I don't deal well with drama. Um, but it did get dramatic. And at the end of the day, I really don't know why. I, I really don't like, you know, all everybody on the show, they have too many things to be concerned with uh, then, you know, then the drama that was created for that show. And to be honest, it just was like a kind of like a turnoff to me, um, which is why I don't have any of those kind of reality shows on my platform produced by me because I just don't have time for it. But everybody wants me to get into reality TV because, I mean, it's kind of like all the way. But I just, I don't know. I, if people start fighting and they got on my equipment, that's going to be a problem. Mm-mm. So, yeah. I haven't done it yet, but everybody still, want, still wants me to. So, I don't know. We'll see. Okay. So, you already say that you were working with the um, the casting progress. Now, we were, now, what was the show supposed to be um, playing off of um, a connection, and if so, what happened that you know it was no longer on your platform? Well, the show is on my platform. Okay, that yeah. that it's is well, that your ex. Yeah, the show is is on my platform. It's it's currently yeah, it's currently on my platform. There's no there's no issues there. Um, but I have the Circle Atlanta on the platform. I don't have yeah. the other circle. the other branches. Yeah, on the platform. Now, is it plans to put the other branches? on the platform no no okay. now it came to us that it might have been a potential issue 
between you and one of our favorite cousins, Drake Stumber. Is it an is <laughs> when we start smelling? What's the issue? You, I mean, you gotta ask him. He was the one that had my name in his mouth. I mean, at the end of the day, I told him to his face what the issue was. So I don't know. Like my thing with people, period, is if I tell you to your face, why you got to talk about it afterward? What's the point? We already had that conversation, so you can ask Trey Simber. I don't have a problem with here. Yeah, he, you know he. Yep, Trav, you going in? I'm about to say we did ask him, <laughs> <laughs> and hopefully, he hopefully pretty much said uh, he. Okay, what he told us was mm -hmm. that you mm -hmm. you didn't cast him for personal reasons. You didn't cast him on on the show because you did not like him. So, okay, so I'll expound on that. First of all, I cannot not cast somebody on a show because I don't like him. I don't know Dre Simber not to like him. I told him to his face when he asked me, I said, I don't think that it was a good look for you to do the show. And based on how you've been acting in all of these reality shows, you seem to be the problem a lot of the time. And for me personally, I just don't want to deal with the drama. So that's why I didn't even entertain even thinking about casting him on anything because of the way he portrays himself on reality TV. Now, that's the thing. It is reality TV. So I'm to assume that that's real, right? That's him. That's how he is. You know what I'm saying? Not unless he's just faking the funk on reality TV. But if that's how he is, I don't want no parts of it. And I told him that to his face. So... Well, that answers my next question. But, does, uh, but doesn't but doesn't that um doesn't that Dre Semberness the the mess of it all? Isn't that really what like sells? Real? Isn't that what gets people watching though? It does, but unfortunately, and I'm saying it's unfortunate, be, unfortunate because I understand that that's how a lot of these networks are making the coin. Specifically speaking, on Zeus Network, um, right. but I did not mm -hmm. want to build. I'll get I'll get really in the center of this camera. I did not and do not want to build my brand off of exploit exploiting my black folk, okay, and making us look like a complete buffoon mess on TV just to get a check. That has never been my mission, um, and I don't see me doing that anytime soon. So if Dre Simber wants to continue that imagery, he can do that wherever he decides to do it. It just won't be on Watch ACTV. Now, if it was brought to me that he was thinking about taking serious, uh, taking acting serious and, you know, getting involved and because he actually came to my mention by way of another uh, fellow actor who I take very seriously. In it, and I actually told him the same thing I told Dre Summer to his face. The thing was, if Dre Summer would have said, you know, I'm trying to clean up my image, that's not me, this and that and the third, whatever the case may be we could have probably had another conversation uh but he didn't give me all of those details so it never happened but then i saw rumblings of him with my name in his mouth being very negative uh negative nancy at the fact that i told him what i told him to his face um and i've never come out about dre simber talking mad bad about him i've never said anything horrible about him but he has some things to say about me so he doesn't care about being on Watch ACTV, and Watch ACTV doesn't care about him being on the network either. <laughs> Just it is what it is. I'm a very a matter of fact person, I um, and everybody that actually knows me knows that I'm very a matter of fact. So, it just, I, it is. I can't help but to respect it. <laughs> okay. Okay, here we go. They say I'm the one. Trap comes in. He helps me blow it up and he eases back out. All right. So now that you're saying if Trey Simper came to you and said, hey, I'm trying to take this seriously. I want to see another side. You say, you oh, I'm good. Oh, I'm good. That, that ship is that ship is so. I mean, yeah. and I, honestly, I really don't even think he cares that much. And that's great because I don't. But once you get to a point where you're like being negative, you know what I'm saying? And you're talking bad about somebody. Like, what's the point? Like, we, if 
I'm, I'm assuming that he's a grown adult. I don't know how old he is, but I'm very much a grown adult. So there's no reason to receive information. If he received it in a way that he didn't like, he could have mm -hmm. easily said, hey, let's chat. Instead of, you know, doing the latter and coming on your platform and being the way that he decided to be. So it just, it is what it is, if he really cared. But I feel like he doesn't really give a fuck, which is why he said what he said. And Wait, you call wind of that? Wait, you, he saw us trap. <laughs> People tell me everything, so, or enough, <laughs> enough, I guess. People tell me enough, so. Yeah, that was like, that was like two days ago. <laughs> <laughs> so you know all of what I'm talking about, okay? You, I see you in these IG, these you, you, YouTube streets. So I'm gonna go, you know, shift this a little bit. What is your relationship to Henderson Maddox? Um, unfortunately, we don't have one now. Um, I, I somebody sent me another clip of his little um, documentary, docu series, or whatever he's coming out with. Um, disclosing a lot of his sexual encounters with everybody that he's worked with. And he felt it necessary to mention my name in that documentary. I just saw the clip. Um, but what I will say is that I hope in the full episode, he tells the exact story of what happened and why that actual conversation or the so said DMs actually occurred. Um, and I'll just leave it at that. Hopefully he tells, you know, hopefully he tells the truth. You know, in the video, he said we were hanging out. Hopefully, he says where we were hanging out. In the video, he said I slid in, you know, homeboys DMs. Hopefully, in the video, Henderson Maddox tells me or tells y'all what he said to me about this particular individual that he was concerned so so much for. Uh, but at the end, end of the day, I saw him not too long ago, said hello to the man. You know, yesterday, it was brought to my attention about his video. I mean, that happened in 2020. There's a flood of messages between us since then. So if that's, it goes back to the Dre Simber thing. Like if people really have a problem with little old me, then just say that you have a problem with me and just like, let's try to, you know, correct it between us. Why then 80,000 years later decide to go on a platform and talk about it? Which, you know, by the way, hey, you can, it's your story to tell. But just make sure that you tell the truth. Trap. The whole truth. I am gagging. I did not know this information. I'm so sorry. I'm gagging. Wait a minute. Hello, 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 hello. Wait a minute. Let's, let's, let's back it up for a second. So, okay. So for the record, to be clear, there, you guys, it was just D talks in the DMs. You guys did not have no sexual interaction. <laughs> Ooh. You you went um you Henderson. No. Oh. Okay. okay. All right. <laughs> so, seeing me though, that was in 2020, and you know it's a whole two three years later. Like, how do you, you say you got sent that clip that he you know of his documentary? How do you feel even being mentioned in his tell all um doc, his tell all interview that he gave? I don't know. Just I, I don't have any emotions toward it. It's just weird. I don't know. It's weird because I, I just is like, why? I don't understand. Now, it was a name thrown around in there, starting with a C. Do you know what I'm talking about? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, who is Curtis, and how are you, what's your relationship to this Curtis guy? Oh, okay. Curtis! I want to say it all the way out. I, I'm thinking you're talking about the name of my dick. Well, you know that's what was dropped. Yeah. I, I don't so, know where it was dropped, but Curtis, I'm, I'm, I'm. Uh, what's the word I can say? Uh, what's the word I'm looking for? <laughs> it's, been, it's been a long time that Curtis was born. Uh, Curtis was born back when I was in New York. And I don't know how I came up with it. I just was feeling froggy and was like, okay, I'm gonna just call him Curtis. Curtis sounds like somebody that's strong, you know, somebody that goes long and hard, you know, which he does. And Curtis? So, 
Curtis is, it just popped in my head and I was like, you know, Curtis is a dope name. Um, and so a lot of the people that actually watch my platform know that. And yeah, you know. So we ain't gonna hear, so just to officially clear it, we ain't gonna hear Curtis come up in this tell interview, right? Just on, you know, I, listen, I don't know. I, to be honest, I'm not gonna watch it. I, I don't really. I, I, hey, I don't know. I don't know. I really don't. What, what you can call that? What clickbait? I mean, there's no, re, there's no reason for him to bring my name up. I don't understand why he's bringing my name up. Like, there's no. I don't know. Oh no, y'all can't see Curtis. You gotta excuse the cousins. Well, that's. <laughs> all that I have for you. I'm going to kick it over to King Bubs. Okay. First of all, can we give a round of applause for Queen D? Yeah. And this motherfucker doing it, okay? Yeah. And thank you, Wesley, for just being open and being honest. I really appreciate this um, conversation. I'm going to let you know right now. I'm awesome edible, so I'm feeling really good right now. Okay. <laughs> but uh, we're going to continue this roller coaster ride uh, that D started. I appreciate it. We're going to kind of go back to some things and kind of expound a little bit deeper. Okay. Okay. So um, going back to your youth, um, you have um, also had some guardian angels with you during your younger years, right? You had a few cousins that helped protect you from people who didn't understand you, right? So if you're comfortable, could you share one of those experiences with us? Um, let me think. I mean, that's, that's interesting. Um, yeah. So my cousins that you're, you're probably referring to are, uh, David and Kevin. Okay. Um, David and Kevin, uh, we're, we're all like around the same age. Um, and they're two brothers and they were, all three of us were similar in age and they had a bigger uh, brother that was my older cousin. Um, mm -hmm. They were kind of like the ones that were how can I, <laughs> teaching me to be straight um, oh, okay. and, and teaching me to, you know, how to play sports and all of that. And it was it was just being gay was just a weird concept, a foreign concept to us because we had no real, you know, like moms and dads or uncles or aunts to look at to say, hey, that's what gay is. It was just real foreign. We just all knew that it wasn't OK. Right. So it was like one of those situations where they would always make sure that I was protected in the sense from being bullied or any of those kinds of things happening to me. So that would be all that I can really say about that. Uh, it's, you know, now that I think about it, it was a very interesting time growing up back then. Uh, but fortunately, I didn't have to worry too much about, you know, fights and, and stuff like that. There was always this one guy that I was always, always getting into a fight with, and I always ended up beating him up. And it just made me feel good because it's like you're picking on me you know, and I'm beating you up and you keep coming to pick on me and I keep beating you up. So I don't know. Just a weird. Well, thing. I'm glad you whooping ass. That's what I really <laughs> appreciate. Because sometimes you need to beat one, teach one. OK. Hey. Um, And do you think also, too, like you basically what was happening is that your cousins was kind of teaching you how to blend, basically yeah. camouflage yourself. Yeah. OK. OK. So I don't know if D asked this question or if you gave an answer. And if so, just let me know. Um, Kind of staying with your childhood. What was the turning point in which you decided that whether understood or not, you were going to create your own lane? So I'm from, I'm a product of a broken home. Um, you know, no father involved, single mom trying to do her thing. Um, and it was a, a chaotic situation for a child to go through, you know, being evicted, um, you know, uh, not having a stable home, always having to move here and there. Um, not really having a lot of money in the household and stuff like that. And, you know, mom trying to do her best. Um, and so for me, being being in that and then, you know, not being able to feel as free as I want to be, um, I realized when I turned 16 that, hey, I could get a job. Okay. And I started working. Okay. When I started working and started making a little money, I was like, oh, wait, money can get me out of this particular yeah. situation. Yeah. So then I started working more. When I turned 17, I was working three jobs. And at the age of 17, I actually worked on getting my own apartment um, and getting out of my mother's situation 
um, so that I, I realized that in order to be as free as I wanted to be, I had to live under my own roof. True. Um, and in order to make that happen, I needed money. So that was like the turning point for me. 16, 17, 18, I was like, okay, enough is enough. I'm going to live on my own and live by my own rules and just, you know, discover me. Right. Okay. So before you got to that point in the midst of dealing with the situation uh, with your mom and your family, but also with your sexuality, like, did you have any moments where you might might have had like maybe some self-destructive thoughts of like hurting yourself or taking yourself out because it's like, what's the purpose of being here? Uh, yeah, when I was do, 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 do. E, probably 15 or 16, um, there are a lot of ways that I thought of in my life, you know, mm -hmm. suicidal thoughts and, and all of that. Mm -hmm. The most biggest and craziest idea was there was an, uh, a railroad bridge that connected two pieces of land. Um, and it stood up high. So right below it was like this running water. Mm -hmm. And I found myself adventuring on the bridge, looking over the bridge, thinking about jumping off. Wow. Um, so yeah, I've had those kinds of thoughts. And you know, it's people don't really realize that when you're young and you don't have someone that you can confide in, um, a, a prominent a prominent figure in your life that can you know give you a hug and hold you and let you know everything is okay and that you you can be who you are. Um, it's kind of difficult, and that that goes back into the reason why I kind of started my platform just to give people an out an outlet. Um, you know, to let you know, to let people know that, you know, people like people are like you that live in this world. Yes. And you don't have to have those kind of self-destructive thoughts um, to try to survive. You know, you could you can expand from that and, and live the life that you want to live. Exactly. So. And we are glad that you're still here because once again, you. you're you're part of that. Like we actually see what you're doing. So obviously you're your purpose was stronger than what you were going through. So we appreciate right, that. Um, but let's go ahead and keep it up with the high spirits a little bit. Let's go back to the whole YouTube situation. So as we know, you started YouTube back in 2005. You gave us iconic characters, Mona Simone, Twan Rose. You ah. interviewed multiple celebrities. You traveled all over the world, internationally known, created over 3,000 videos and et cetera. So I just want to ask you this question, just looking at it right now. How does it feel to like, High key, be that nigga. Like, how does that feel? <laughs> I don't know. It's interesting because when D was asking me questions about people and their feelings, I was like, I just don't have time for none of it. You mm, know what I'm saying? Right. My purpose is so beyond that. You know what I'm saying? And it's unfortunate that a lot of people, you know, want to stay there, but I just don't have time for none of it. And I just, I'm very, um, people say I'm very humble and I am very humble. But there comes a time when you just need to let people know that a lot of your favorites are here because of me um, and a multitude of others. OK, um, there were about seven of us that were the first black gay anything online. And, you know, one of them is Nunu. Yes. Um, and one of them is Kevin Scorpion from The Scorpion Show. I'm about to answer my you other question. Have, <laughs> Go ahead. You also have Zen Van Adams. Um, there are quite yes. a few of us, uh, Africana boy, um, you know, but I'm talking about the icons in that space, baby. I'm talking about the icons, Yes. you know, yes. Uh, yes. but no shade to everybody that's doing it now, but I did that already. And I'm just mm -hmm. glad that you are, and everybody is successful with what they're doing. So I'm not trying to take anything from anybody. I'm just saying, I like to create my own space mm -hmm. and stay within that space because it's authentic to me. And um, whatever anybody decides to do or however anybody decides to entertain, God bless you, because I'm just glad that we're all able to entertain. So yeah, exactly. exactly. Yeah. I, and, and like D said, I just love how the flow of this conversation is going, because it's like question after question is just it's, it's in sync. So, like, how does it feel to also going back to your 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 credentials? to be an important pillar when it comes to the black same gender loving community on YouTube. Like you said, one of the first ones, like how does it feel to, to, to uh, be a part of that foundation for everybody to build upon today? It's um, sometimes it's exhausting and sometimes it's comforting. Um, it's comforting from the space that I don't 
uh, how can I say this? I don't pound my head in every second to do this, 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 to do this. Um, because I've done a lot, I chill out. Right. I, at least I've gotten to the space where I could just chill out and be like, oh, let me try that. I think that's dope. Or let me go this direction. I think I'm going to do that. You know what I'm saying? Um, on the uh, flip side, it's always encouraging and it keeps me moving forward because there are a lot of times where um, a lot of, a lot of like the icons that I just mentioned, we aren't as prevalent as we used to be back in the day. And so now I see a lot of the younger cats um, doing their thing. And before it used to get to me a little bit, but now it doesn't anymore because I still have a core fan base or supporting base that appreciates me. And you know, what is so surreal is every time I travel in any state of the United States of America, I, I kid you not, there is always someone mm. that comes up to me and says, thank you for X, Y, Z, Elemental P. And I don't know about too many people that that happens to, but it's it always grounds me every time that that happens. Mm. So to all of you that do it, never be shy to come up to me, especially when you got good energy, because it it centers me. It lets me know that you've you've been doing it and you're continuing doing it and so just keep on so yeah okay so basically like getting to a point to where you realize uh what god has for me is for me can't nobody take that away from me and once you realize right. that it's like you can let everybody else shine but you know you're gonna get yours too right, right. okay right. cool awesome so let's go back down memory lane just a little bit okay again picture it youtube is 2005 through like maybe 2006 7 8 around that time like you said, you got the Scorpion show. Uh, I got some other ones. I got Blue Eyes Simba, 3LW TV. You got Quadir Howell, who was Tamaya. You got Sweet Addictions TV, Joe Work TV, New New, Miss P TV, and like countless others, right? So like looking back in retrospect, how did you feel about the connection between content creators at that time? Oh, it was amazing. Think back, um, I don't know how old you are, but think back um, the first house party um watching the first house party just the just the you when you know you walk in that house and you know you're amongst family and you know mm -hmm. that the, the mission statement is just beautiful you know what i'm saying right it's just like shout out to nunu it's yeah. just like mm -hmm. you it, it's just an understanding you know we had we had an event called the blackout yeah um that sweet decisions and everybody threw mm -hmm. and just being there feeling the love and and just knowing that it's for us bias is just always been a beautiful thing. And even today, whenever I see me and Nunu, we still talk. Uh, whenever I see any of the the guys or, or women, um, it's just it, it comes from a place of love. And there's never been any issues with the core group of innovators. So it's just always a breathtaking experience. Right. Like the supporting. And it was like it was good to see like the sense of community and support. Like nobody was jealous of each other. Everybody was doing collabs with each other. It was like everybody was getting a piece of the, of the imagine. Project. Imagine uh, the best uh, 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 metaphor that I could say is, you know, again, I don't know how old you are, but D, I don't know how old you are either. But I'll just say when a good. 80s or 90s song come on and the yeah. whole club knows the lyrics that's what it was like for us as youtubers when a good you know when you know when sweet addictions walks in the house what she's gonna give you know when nunu walks in the house what's gonna be given it was just that kind of energy right now when you listen to music today it's kind of like what you know so it's kind of like the same thing for us it's like when we see and hear certain things it's like okay all right cool you know what works works so yeah <laughs> and, and speaking of that like fast forward to 2022 like how do you feel about the connection between content creators today do you feel like there's a lack of community or no yeah no it's not the same not the same it's not the same mm -hmm. yeah i don't I, I, <laughs> neighborhoods it's not the same. um I don't know. I, you know, every time every time I bring an actor on board or an actor comes around, they're like, you know, why don't you why don't you work with such and such or 
why don't you work with such and such? And my response is, I don't know. You have to ask them. Um, I, I, my part in it is that I don't go out seeking um, to work with other people because I, again, one of the oldest, I, I know what people bring to my mm -hmm. circle, bring to my energy. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And for me, people typically need to be vetted. Um, and so you can't have everybody in your, you can't bring everybody to your house. You can't bring everybody, everybody can't eat your food. Like it's just one of those kind of things. So it's it, it's a combination of me not knowing where everybody's creative space is and me wanting to protect my own. Um, I'm learning, I'm learning that now. I'm so happy yeah. that you, that's the process I'm going through personally now in the creative, yeah. Yeah. not allowing everybody in my space. Cause that's what I was doing. Yeah. So I'm just so happy you said that. I'm sorry. Yeah. Continue. Um, and it's just a matter of understanding where you are, when you are, how you are um, versus everybody else. And again, where they are, that's okay. Yes. Where you are, that's okay. Yes. You don't always have to come together. As long as there is no negative energy, then we're good. You know, everybody doesn't have to be cool with each other and everybody doesn't have to work with each other. You know, it just, it's one of those kind of things. Um, I will say, though, that whoever I do work with in the future is mm -hmm. definitely going to have to be a, a, a connection or a synergy there before I even say action. OK, and I second that. OK, you got to protect your energy at all costs. Um, I got a few more questions for you. Um, let's talk about faith for a minute. OK, um, I think it's between correct me if I'm wrong, because as I was doing my research, like from 2016 to 2017, um, there came a point where you ended up losing your full-time job, okay, which helped to pay the bills while A Connection TV was still evolving. You then moved to Florida in hopes to moving to Atlanta. Something happened, and it created the opportunity to finally move to ATL, and here we are now. So, like, how did you push through that experience to get to this point? in your life today i think florida was my worst come on with y'all researching y'all y'all better we, we award winning over here okay y'all better, 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 better do it <laughs> y'all better come on with these questions um so florida was my worst adult um time in life like right. um it was really really bad because you know think early 30s you go from making a ton of money in new york you know living living on your own being super successful in new york and then go from that to living in somebody's room mm. and as an adult it's like what the fuck? like what's right. going on so that played that that plagued me and my energy um but what kept me afloat is my youtube because i was still doing youtube at the time and just meeting some dope ass people in orlando um sheldon jeremy um drake tc um uh mcgrady meyer just some dope ass individuals that allowed uh, afforded me the opportunity to have fun in orlando mm -hmm. to come go out in orlando to build in orlando and to be honest that's where the culture club actually became its strongest was in Orlando and the culture club is a panel discussion show um that I birthed on a connection TV's YouTube and we just shot the shit about everything under the sun um and it became really really popular and a lot of people still want me to bring the Orlando crew back to this day uh but doing no staying in the creative space kept me grounded right. and you know I was working I got back on my feet I started working a nine to five I moved out of the room, <laughs> got a roommate with, uh, I became a roommate with uh, McGrady. Um, oh, I love that man. He is so dope, super dope. Shout out to McGrady. And I was sitting at my nine to five in my cubicle. And I was like, this shit is not for me. Mm, right, right. This is not for me. This is not my mission statement in life. This is not where I want to be. This is not what I want to do. I don't give a damn about this person's insurance when they call this phone. I'm going to quit. And without a pot to piss in, well, I have my apartment, but I had no, no real plan. Mm -hmm. I just quit. And I knew that I wanted to move to Atlanta. I knew that it was plausible for me to move to Atlanta. But I had probably, I think I quit like maybe two months prior to. 
um because i was really that fed up and and just in life i feel like you have to do what you want to do when you want to do it how you want to do it because life is not guaranteed and so in that moment i literally got up i quit and it said i'm gonna move and i moved to atlanta and ever since 2017 since being in atlanta i've not had to punch a clock and i've been doing what i love to do so yeah but it's not like easy yeah, right. <laughs> right. But it's something you love to do. So it's kind of yeah. like, yeah, it comes with the challenges, but the challenges benefit you if you push through it. Yeah. Got you. Okay, cool. I got two more questions. I'm going to pass it over to the king of the house, Trap. Um, so right now in this moment, like having these questions during this interview and just thinking about it, like what has this whole experience from the beginning up till now um, has taught you about yourself? Like, give us one core fundamental thing you've learned about yourself. This may sound cocky, but I'm the best person you'll ever get to meet in this entire world. And I say that because I've been through a lot. Because you're a Leo. I say that because I've been through a lot. Mm -hmm. And um, that could be my Leo traits, but I mean, it just it is what it is. Uh, but anyone who is who has ever come across me, uh, I can honestly say that if they have anything ill towards me or any ill feelings, it's them. Mm -hmm. um, and I'm proud to be able to say that. Right. Um, and I don't mean any harm to anybody. I, I, I come as me and I leave as me. You never have to question or guess or wonder because I'm always going to tell you. Um, and it just it is what it is. I, I believe that everyone has a place. And I think that's why. I'm happy with who I am as a person. I don't judge people. I don't, um, I, I'm just not negative towards people. You know what I'm saying? Right. Um, and I, I, I do try my damnedest uh, as best as I can to adopt similar connections despite our differences, no matter what. Um, but where I draw the line is when you are negative for no reason and yeah. you bring negative energy to the circle for no reason, yeah. or if you're violent, or any of those kind of things, like you're trying to do bodily harm to people. I just don't, those are things that I just don't stand for. Right. Um, and I, I, it took a long time for me to love me. Yeah. There are a lot of people out here. There are a lot of people out here that don't love themselves. Say it. Okay. Um, and I'm going to look down at D with her questions about certain people. There are a lot of people in this world that aren't happy with themselves, okay? And I'm I'm damn fine with me, Okay, you know what I'm saying? I love what I bring to the table and I love what I remove to the table. So I just implore everybody or hope for everybody to finally get there. You know what I'm saying? Because we're all, well, I don't know if, I don't know who's LGBTQ or what in this panel, but I'll just say we're all black <laughs> and we're all, and we're all family. I'll start right. with I'll start with black first. Okay. 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 Um, we're all black and we're all family. And I and I'm a huge advocate for us not doing any of the infighting with each other. Yeah. Because we have to we have to band together and go against the world every fucking day that we okay. live and breathe. So for us to always have infighting with each other, it makes no sense. Right. And I still I stand strong on that. And I and that is always my message whenever I come around somebody. So I don't know. I I've been through a lot, man. I, I don't know how old you are, but I'm I'm old. Okay. Oh, I'm I thirty. I'll be thirty one next month. You're thir what? Oh, you I'll still be thirty one next month. Oh, you a baby. That's so sweet. Still young. That's so sweet. Um, but I just don't have you when you get to the forties, when you get to the forties, baby, you don't give a fuck about <laughs> none of this shit. Okay. I kind of feel like yeah. that now. <laughs> okay, well then you then you good. But wait till you wait till your ass gets I can't wait. I'll be like what the fuck? Age like wine, yes. What are you talking about? Like what? Mm -hmm. No, there's other shit to be concerned with in this world. So right, Ex exactly. Yeah, exactly. I just, I just don't have time. Okay. But so my last. Oh, wait, 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 wait. So, so sorry, but it's wait, funny wait. that all the Leos are in this chat with the same energy, cutting up like you are. You Leos are a mess. I just had. To say I see that. 295 comments, but I have my thing on private chat. But I'm. I don't know how the comments, the comments okay? 
I ain't, I can't even see it yet. I'm looking at these questions. Okay. Um, so, but my last question to you is this. So, like you said, you've you've been through a lot. You've been through ups. You've been through downs. Radical transformations. All this stuff, especially with you being a creator above all. Like you said, you're everything is under the umbrella of your creative energy. So, to all creators out there that are that are watching this or listening to this, whether it's new creators, older creators, struggling creators, like what is one rule that you think? every creator should live by in order to like live their best life it's simply put do you do you um there's always been this thing uh where if i well not always but of the new age of creators there's this thing that when i drop a video i'm copying someone no no mm. baby no no baby no no baby i've done it before i did it already i did it when youtube was just birthing baby right. so for me it's like do you because i'm always gonna do me you know mm -hmm. what i'm saying and that's just it just be creative stay in your space and i purposely don't watch other creators and what they got going on because i love to marinate in my originality as best as i can you know um so yeah do you okay well, thank you so much for this uh, part of the interview with me. I appreciate it. Like, once again, I grew yeah. up watching that. So, like I said, when you was naming everybody, especially, um, oh, so, man, you just said their names earlier. Zim Vet Adams and all them. I'm like, damn, how did I forget Zim Vet Adams? He was yes. one of the ones. One of the most intelligent, so. articulate personalities yes. that ever grace our space back in the old days of YouTube. Yes, yeah. And, and I hope there's some sort of reemergence of that. I, I just hope that there is. But I, I, I'm glad to at least have the opportunity to interview someone who, once again, was part of the starting foundation and learning the wisdom. So thank you. I really appreciate it. Thank, thank you. you. I'm going to pass it over to Trap with the Mariah Scary wig. Get it, bitch. Uh -oh. Ooh. Uh -oh. <laughs> Ooh, I'm over here going through it. OK, Um. so over 3,000 videos, right? Um. How do you keep your creative juices flowing? What do you do to keep, you know, keep it going? Life and every experience that I go through um, shows me something different that I haven't talked about yet that I should talk about. Um, the people that I'm around, uh, my circle, even some of the actors. Um, I'm always learning from my experiences. Um, and as far as writing is concerned, um, I watch some, in my opinion, some profound, excellent programming. Um, now, some of my top favorite shows are All American, um, which is a fantastic, fantastic, well-written, um, well-acted show. Um, I love The Equalizer is a dope show. Um, I just stay in tune to certain cinematography in in the ways that things are being done and i try to elevate myself to the 10th degree whenever i produce something new um which is why i can't wait for the mr season three to just like oh it's gonna be so good oh sorry <clears throat> okay i live by the motto that adapt for me adaptation is the key to life and to key and, and the key to um business is it me or, or are we are we freezing am i free is it me freezing is i'm i'm good i see everybody fine um I'm sure i pay my wi-fi man. what's going on i don't know i don't, I don't understand <laughs> but <laughs> but like i was like adaptation to me is the key to life as as well as in business so i understand earlier you said you have not dived into the reality tv world yet but it is you know the cat's meow it is the the thing to do. So with that being said, would you ever adapt to what is going on now and enter the reality TV space? There is a reality show that I want to start. It just has to be on a certain level in order for me to start it. And it's an idea that no one has ever done. And I'm proud of that. And I'm looking forward to, to starting it when we start it. But Again, I'm just waiting to get certain things in line so that the product looks visually stimulating enough for me to be like, okay, Wes, put this out. But yes, I am going to enter the reality space. Um, just, it just is not going to be. 
what is I, what, we, I, I, what we have now. Right. <laughs> yeah, I had to I had to stop you. I felt like I know where you was going. That's like, right. oh, let's let's pull no no no. But I get I get what you're saying. You want to you want to switch it up a little bit. Okay. Yeah. I'm thinking like um maybe more in the realm you said it's something that's never been done but like maybe like more in the realm of like you know big brother or um like you know it's just something like different like that type of realm you're going for and i think that is much needed in the reality tv world because everybody just copies the housewives and it's like that's a dead horse at this point there's so many other concepts that we can do so i'm excited for the future and thank you for that exclusive see Hey, watch <laughs> AC. They will have reality TV. I'll just give the man some time. Yes. And hey, I, it's a lot <coughs> that goes into doing this online streaming platform. I think a lot of individual consumers just think that it's just easy. Like I had to literally save up money to get to Roku TV and to Amazon Fire Stick. I couldn't just start with all of these ability, these, these ways for you to stream the services because I don't know if you guys know, but you have to pay an arm and a leg for each individual service to in order to stream your stuff. So iOS is a fee monthly. Um, Android is a monthly fee. Roku is a monthly fee. Um, Fire Stick is a monthly fee. Xbox is a monthly fee. PlayStation is a monthly fee. Apple TV is a monthly fee. And the last one is Samsung is a monthly fee. You got to pay all of that monthly in order to get it and i ain't got that over here not yet anyways i say not yet not yeah yet. so it takes time it takes time and you gotta pay started, to you gotta pay to play baby right right and that's the thing when we started back in 2018 we we'll watch actv we only had two programs up now we have over 584 uploads to the platform so it just takes time hey Mariah Carey said the best. Love takes time. Okay. <laughs> now, speaking of reality TV, do you think it would be harder for you to film reality TV versus, you know, filming like, you know, documentaries and movies and, you know, things of that nature? No, I think reality TV is, would be, or not I think, reality TV is a little easier to film because you don't have to worry about, well, if it's reality TV, you don't have to worry about a script or anything to go by or anything like that. You just set up the scene, film, and you know, let them do their thing. Um, so for me, that is easier um than you know, scripts and movies and stuff. Okay. Now, um <clears throat> earlier on in the interview, we, we mentioned you your Mona, you know. Yes. <laughs> what made you transition from yes? What made you go into um the adult realm of, of inter of interviewing adult entertainers. Because I feel like we need to adopt similar connections despite our differences. Um, everybody uh, indulges and, and consumes sex, um, ind indulges and, and, con and consumes adult content. Um, I'd say 99.99999% of the, the population. Uh, but then you have those people that are like, I don't know what, uh, why do they do that? Oh my God, it's horrible. Like I would never, I would never, I would never. But everybody has an OnlyFans today. Well, not everybody, but a lot of people have OnlyFans today. So it just, it is what it is. I've never been a subscriber to that uh, prejudice thinking that, you know, adult entertainers aren't real people. Um, and I always felt that they deserved a platform to be able to speak about how real um, they are. Um, so yeah. Yes, I want to say that this while I have you up here, you gave me the from one black man to another because I didn't really see too many um queer black folks interviewing, you know, adult entertainers, especially you know, brown folks or whatever. So you gave me like inspiration and the confidence to do that when I started my brand. Because at first all I did was interview um adult stars. And so I just want to say thank you for that. I'm going to give you your flowers for that. No. So, okay. Now, <clears throat> let's talk about Watch ACTV. Okay. Wait, where is it? Darling. Okay. The, rec the Reckoning described Watch ACTV as a game changer in digital content creation. Yes. Why do you think... Why do you think they they why do you think they titled it that so profoundly? 
um, because I'm one of the networks that didn't start off exploiting black gay people. Um, that's it. <laughs> okay, now Mr. Three is coming. <laughs> Mr. Three, uh, Mr. Season Three is coming, and you are having um, adult entertainer. Hello, the legendary. Yes, Max Connor. He is starring in Mr. Three. Now, your relationship with Max um, Max Connor started years ago. But, but eventually you guys, I'm assuming, developed a friendship and whatnot. Now, Max, he used to act back in the day, but he kind of stepped out. You know, he lost his passion for acting. But now he's back and you know, the Mr. Season 3. How did you get him to, to do that for you? Or what made him want to be a part of this? Um, We were having some kind of conversation about something I can't even remember. And he basically just ask me when are you gonna put me in one of your shows and i was like uh when do you want to be in one of my shows and he was like whenever you want me to put me, you know whenever and i'm like okay well shit. um i got to thinking about it and i was like what would be the best spot for him to join and why not put him on one of the most requested and popular series on the platform um the mister and He's like the perfect, per I got the perfect role for him to play. Uh, it's going to play off his sex appeal, uh, but it's also going to show him in a different light. I, I don't see too many lights out there um, cascading over Max Connor that shows him the way that I know him. Uh, right. And so, um, yeah, I think it'll be dope. I can't wait. And he's super down and ready to go. Um, so, yeah, look forward to it. It's going to be hot. What can we, can you give us a little glimpse of what we can expect from the Mr. Season Three, and how does it uh, how is it different from you know Season One and Season Two? You know, I don't Excuse know me. if you feel this way about. Uh, well, I'll just say I feel this way about me and a lot of people that I see. Like when you look at like your yearbook picture, okay, you're like ah damn, why did I what what? And then you look at yourself today and you're like, okay, yeah, I'm feeling me today, you know, right, right, you know, right, you look sexy, you know. Um, so that's how I feel about the Mister. When I look at season one of the Mister, boy, we was looking kind of what, and we was like real immature, and you know the storyline was so Neanderthal. And then I look at Mister season three, and I'm like, bitch, we looking fine. We done grew up. We got mature. Um, and so a lot of the issues that were that I wrote about in the Mister season one, um, the characters have grown up, and they don't care about those kinds of things anymore. And so the challenge is to bring on the new drama and the new twists and the new turns. And then with the way that I write things now, it's going to be very interesting. I can't wait to see like the audience try to figure out who the villain is or who the villains are. Um, I think it's going to be super, super dope because people are going to be surprised. And when I did the table read with the actors, I heard a lot of who and the hollering. I heard a lot of laughter. I heard a lot of bitch, you got what? No, nah. you know, I heard a lot of that. So the fans and supporters of the Mister, I'm just I can't wait for them to, you know, engage with the new season. I'm I'm so looking forward to it. Um speaking of your writing process, how would you say your writing process has um changed? How would you say your writing process has changed throughout the years and what keeps you inspired? Um my writing has changed because I used to write seven minute long scenes. And you look at television today and not, there's very rare that you're gonna see a scene that lasts seven fucking minutes. And so it's like, for me, I just be writing and writing and writing and writing and writing. And again, I look at today's current television and scenes are barely two minutes long. They, you, you get to a scene, you find out what's happening, then you move on to the next. Especially Insecure. Insecure is one of my um, favorite shows that just shows and highlights maturity in such a sensual, sexual way. Um, and the way that they like brown people is just amazing. And Issa Rae is phenomenal. And um, so I look at I look at shows like that, and it's like boom, 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 boom. We get to the point. Let's move on. Let's move on. And I feel like you know, cutting a scene 
delivering the information that you need to deliver under two minutes and going to the next scene keeps the audience engaged and keep them wanting to figure out what's going to happen next. So, yeah. You recently had your first ever theater premiere for Watch ACTV. What was that night like for you, looking back? It was like being born again. Um, you know, it was like a reemergence. It was like um, uh, a finally. It was like, you know, this is the day. This is the moment. Oh, snap. The theater's packed. Oh, snap. Sold out. Oh, snap. It's on a big screen. Oh, snap. I'm dressed up in a motherfucking suit looking fine as fuck. <laughs> what? What? Because that was the first time I ever been dressed like that ever in my entire life. Okay. And so I actually got a stylist, my boy Ty, to hook me up and throw me into some, put me into some shit. All the actors were looking fab. It was just amazing. And then one of the biggest like dreams of any film creator or whatever is to see the audience's reaction to their work. So being in the theater and hearing everybody laugh when they're supposed to laugh, watching Mona Simone, somebody I thought of so many years ago and today is playing in a fucking theater and everybody's laughing. Like, what? That was freaking bananas. So, so dope. So, so dope. I, you know, I'm doing another one. Um, I'm doing another one this year to debut The Mister. Um, so it's going to be dope. Yeah. Oh my God, you're doing like you're doing another one. Yes. Okay. Oh, I'll talk to you in the inbox. I will let you know. <laughs> shit. I might want to. I might want to pull up. You know, yes. just to show my support. You know what yes. I'm saying? Now, speaking of the legendary Mona, let's talk about her really quick. I don't know. If, I don't know if D dived into this earlier, but if she did, please forgive me. So, um, this specific character. Would you say it was inspired by like a Shanae, besides black women, but like 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 a Shanae, like Martin Lawrence, like a Shanae and Tyler Perry? Did those gentlemen um inspire you to want to create a character of your own? Yes, um, exactly. Um, I I'm gonna say I don't know if any of those men are gay. I don't right. know. They're not. I, allegedly. I don't know. Allegedly. I, I I don't know. Medea. I don't know. But I wanted to see a gay version. Like a, a guy who was openly gay, you know, tapping into that space. I did realize that it was going to be dr drastically difficult for me because because I am openly gay. People just wrote me off and was like, "Oh, that's just a nigga dressing up and being a being a girl." And oh, he oh he he's just doing what he want to do. And you know, I had a lot of people saying that that's how you know he lives. Like I live as Mona Simone and it's not a character and whatever. Um, but, you know, back in the day, I would take it seriously. Like I would shave off the mustache. I would shave off the beard. Today, you got niggas running around here with full beards and shit doing the doing the all of the characters and all that. Uh, but I, I took the character like so seriously because I didn't know about prosthetics and covering up shit and then doing the makeup. I'm learning this shit all by myself. And so it was difficult. I had one guy told me, he was like, I can't be with you because I don't want to be with a gay superhero. Um, and so, you know, it it was difficult, you know, being an openly gay man and playing a female impersonated character. Um, really, really difficult, so much so that I I went through a spell of deleting damn near all of the Mona videos off my YouTube because it was fucking with my life. Um, I regret, that's probably like the only regret that I have in life is deleting, you know, those Mona Simone videos because uh, they were very, very classic and they were very, very dear to a lot of the people that supported and have been supporting me. Um, but it was really, really affecting my life. I couldn't, I couldn't be in a relationship with people. I could find love. I always had to explain what Mona was and why. And so it was hard. So, yeah. Okay. Am, am I here, you guys? You did, uh, you did go out and in for a second. 
I'm about to say, because I damn sure y'all was all black for me for a second. I was I was inboxing D like, girl, I, I lost connection, girl. Hold it down. Do something, girl. I don't know. Show, show him the titty, honey. I don't know. Figure it out. Look, it's, a, it's a lot over here to show. We'll be specific for days. I don't know. I don't know what's going on tonight. Oh, speaking of your love life, before we get out of here, um, how is, how is your love life? Well, Especially I'm, now. I'm in a partnership. So... Um, uh, so yeah, I am with someone that is very um, supportive of what I do and actually encouraged me to bring uh, Mona Simone back, um, which is part of the reason why you see Mona Simone on this t-shirt. Right. Um, I had to recondition my mind to um, re-realize why I created the character in the first place and um understand that the character is funny as fuck and she needs her own light and so yeah how long have you been with your partner if you don't mind me asking since 2018 may 1st 2018 yeah oh come on partnership i've been with my baby since 2017 so i feel you hey (laughs) (laughs) now the last question before we get out of here and thank you so much for, for your time i really appreciate it um what would you say to an, an aspiring um, content creators who one day would like to have their own streaming um, network? What are, How does one go about getting that? Well, um, there are so many different platforms out there to deliver your content to the world, asset YouTube. So if you literally just Google it, you'll see about five or six or seven of them, right? Um, my platform is running on the same company platform that Zeus network runs on. Um, and so when I, when I, which is Vimeo, Vimeo. Um, so when I figured out how to go about utilizing Vimeo and, um, kind of mirroring it in the same way that YouTube does, I was like, okay, this is dope. All right, let's go. Um, Come to find out, it's not easy. Um, Even with, you know, over 60 million views, 140 semi subscribers, 40,000 on uh, Instagram and blah, 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 blah. It's still very difficult to um, promote your content out there and get people to buy in what you're trying to sell them. Um, Especially now that we're in an era where there's so many online streaming platforms out there. You have Hulu, you have Zeus Network, you have Netflix, you have HBO Max, you have Disney Plus, you have Apple Plus, you know, all of this stuff is out there. And it's just like, damn, how can I carve my little, my little, little space in this? Um, But again, um, to Dove's point, you just got to do you and just do it like Nike and just make it happen. But it's not easy. It's not. (laughs) <laughs> it's a lot of work and i was very 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 close very very close to doing the exploitation thing that everyone else is doing but i stopped myself i was like no this is not what i want to do it's not what i want to do it's not right so i just don't want to be known for sex and i just don't want to be known for fighting and i want to be known for my content and actually doing stories that uh you know allows us to be seen in the lights that we complain about that we don't see on TV. Like, it's so annoying. Like, you got all these content creators, no shade, but shade, making all this money off the stereotypes and exploitations of Black people, and they're not taking any of that money to feed the souls, you know? But we can quickly be like, well, why they got this character on this? And why they doing this? And why, why aren't you changing that? Why aren't you a part of the equation to change that? And, and at the same time, you know, shade to the community, we consume it either way. Right. Like, you know, uh, we could be all butthurt about what Zeus is doing, but Zeus is making a motherfucking killing by providing what people are willing to pay for. So, you know, I don't, I don't judge the content creators for taking the easy way out, but I just don't want to be a part of that equation. I believe that there is a community out there that wants to see different stuff. And maybe, just maybe, they want a little sprinkle of that, but not all of that. 
You know what I'm saying? So I still am in that space. But some of my some of my content uh does have a little couple sex scenes in it, but it's nothing like it's more on the insecure and less on the porn hub, you know? Um, so that's just the 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 common ground that I find myself in. Okay. What are your plans? I can't never say the word to differentiate. Different <laughs> I can never say that word. What are your plans to do that, that word, uh, um, to to the other streaming um apps that are that are out there now? How 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 do you make watch ACTV different? You know that that will make people want to subscribe because, like you said, there's there's so there's so many options. I had why, to, why you? I had to um, come to the realization that my niche is LGB, LGBTQ. Um, every every successful company deals with their niche, um, and I started off not wanting to do that. I started off wanting to just you know do straight content and start there, um, but I, I figured out that that wasn't the best move and it's not the best move if i have nothing but lgbtq community people sitting at the table i gotta feed them lgbtq food you know um and so staying in that space for now and developing quality content for them because out of all of the popularly known um uh, uh streaming platforms the hulus the disney pluses the you know, even all black, okay? Um, Zeus, BET, they do not have an LGBTQ sector um, prominently for feeding us. Um, and so that's how I fit into the equation. Um, coupled with the fact that I'm, I'm constantly caring and working on quality over quantity, no shade, all light. Um, and it just, it is what it is. Um, I pride myself on working on my cinematography. Um, I pride myself with working on the script, the stories, what's being told. And I pride myself on delivering actors that can act. So, yeah, those are the differences with my platform. Okay, love to see it. Now, do you have a team? Like, do you have a um, a, a chief branding officer who does, like, like the branding and, and marketing for you who can help help you out in certain areas? No, I don't. I need that. It would be amazing if, if anybody's out there that, you know, um, wants to fill that role. That would be amazing. Um, yeah, but I, I don't. I, you know, I've gone through the years having like, you know, certain writers to write certain projects. A lot of writers have written certain projects. Right now I'm doing um, a sharing program, um, a residual income program on my platform for people that have completed works. They have the potential to receive residual income, just like um, what YouTube does. But the only thing with me is that we won't, you don't have to worry about copyright stuff. You don't have to worry about, you know, swearing or community guidelines per se with my platform. Because a lot of a lot of content creators are getting shut down on YouTube because of YouTube right. all, all algorithms and everything. You don't have to worry about that on, on my platform. So I do have um, Levi in L.A., um, we have opposites, the season opposites from Fitch Royalty um, shared on the platform. We have uh, Will, Will King, Liam King, who has shared a plethora of, of content on the platform. Um, and they all get to benefit from the residual income program. So if there are any directors, writers out there that have completed works that they want to submit, dope. Um, but yeah, I think I answered your question, I think. Yeah, yeah, no, I was just more talking about from like, I, I feel like you're talking about like from the creative standpoint. I'm yeah. really talking about like from the business as I as definitely a, need it. I definitely need and want anybody that can offer uh, a different perspective business wise. Business wise, on how, yeah. On how to continue moving forward. Cause I, I do want somebody like a chief chief officer of marketing. Um I do want uh I do need a, an assistant publicist. Um I do need those types of key positions filled. I just haven't met anybody that can show and prove. And, you know, I haven't met anybody that I feel that could elevate the platform. So. Wow. Well, I hope it, um, Atlanta, if you live in Atlanta, y'all better. 
get on it because that, that's just the that's the way to go. I think that is so important in, in, in a company to have those. Um, even though you're not a public company, I still call them board meetings. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's this this is great to have those Definitely. and things of that nature. And I, I feel like if you do that, the sky is the limit. Because I damn sure I'm about to do that myself. Yes, sure. yes. So. <clears throat> I see y'all uh, y'all doing big things over here. Um, I definitely appreciate this interview. I had to I had to pre-screen you a little bit. I'm like, what what kind of what's going on? What, what's happening? <laughs> what, what y'all got? Because I've been seeing some videos. What y'all about to do? What what, what y'all want? Who about to be on this interview? <laughs> I had to make sure, but no, this is definitely dope. Um, and, and just for the record, I don't have any problems with anybody. I mean, right. People may have their issues with me. But that's the issues with me. I don't have any problems with anybody. So I just want to make that clear. I'm a very positive, upbeat person. I don't have time for the mess. I just want us all to get to the bag. And it would be amazing if we go all get to the bag together. Okay. Right. Um, I am a firm believer in that. So I just want to make sure that I say that before this video goes off. Well, thank you so much for coming on the platform. I enjoyed you thoroughly and i told you it was going to be okay you know you you've seen some of our you know he's seen some of our live videos which is different from an interview so he was a little he was a little wary he's a little I'm wary. Like, wait a minute what's about to happen here <laughs> <laughs> yeah. but, but it's not like it's not like i wouldn't have been able to i mean I, i've been around the world in iii so i'm used to speaking my truth that's all that i speak so um, the way that I flew through these questions, I would have flown through anybody else. So it's it's okay. Um, I just, I don't like that kind of energy bathed on me. Right. Because I take showers every day. So, yeah. Definitely understandable. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, this has been Wesley Henderson. Okay, please subscribe to watchactv.com right now okay thank you so much wesley thank you, thank have you, a great you. night thank you you too bye <laughs> i enjoyed him i enjoyed him what did you guys I, think i love this it was it was different it was like real grown up it was fun hell i didn't have to ask half my questions he just flowed straight into them yeah so. it was like a breath <laughs> of fresh good. air and i feel like we got a lot of wisdom too and i don't know maybe because i'm off these edibles maybe i feel that way but i thought it was a good ass <laughs> interview i loved it i loved it yeah it was it was very very grown and sexy and um yeah. you know i love talking to people about business and you know picking their brains and things of that nature because he's done a lot like you know and i don't think people give him his, his flowers like you know right. Yeah. They don't give him his flowers, enough flowers. But before we get out of here, I just want to let the people know that we have an interview this Tuesday, okay, with the one and only Rick Rosa. Yes, this Tuesday, June seventh at nine p.m. Gag. Gag. I am so looking forward to that. Oh, I have to tell you, Trump, I thank you for that Tuesday or day. It, it seems like every day we have our interview is the day the game is on. So when you said, told me what day, I'm like, yes, I don't have to. <laughs> okay. <laughs> like, I don't have to split focus. I'm over here like this, like sneaking and watching. But no, I, I like, it's something that Wesley said, right? Um. He said something that made me think of like the whole DL Monique situation where he said he controls his environment to yeah. make sure certain energies are not around him. And I'll be damned if he if that's not what, you know, DL said either today or yesterday. That's why he controls so much around him because he don't want situations like this mm -hmm. that he's in right there. I was like, oh, my God, it was almost the same. But I agree with him. Like I, after what those what we've been through, Jack, it's like I have to control my energy. Mm. I have to control my surroundings now. Like I can't have anybody Girl, around. Honey, Girl. I have been through it, honey. I'm tired. Okay. 
<laughs> peace, <laughs> peace, love, and happiness. Peace, love, and chicken right. grease, bitch. Wait, yeah. <laughs> right. Come on over here. Let me fix you a turkey sandwich or something. You, you know, we don't have to be beefing. But, but I like what he. Uh, I like what he said because it's all love. Like it's no, it's no yeah. animosity. It's all love. It's just sometimes you know, people don't mix. It it's okay. Mm -hmm. And you know what? I think that's that's right. Like it. It's it's something about that, like you know, mm, ain't nothing against you, but you just can't come over here. I it's we won't mix. That's why I got that. Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you so so, Jeff. They Ooh. said our chemistry just gets better and better. Yes, it we, are, oh. we are definitely doing our big ones. Thank you, Bubs. Thank you, D. So much, Bubs. You enjoy your edible. Hey, Amen. <laughs> thank you. And I'll Mama. see you guys. I'll see you guys another time. <laughs> well, you guys, I hope you guys enjoyed the interview. This um, in this panel interview has been sponsored by Ruckus and Duchess, streaming now on outtv.com, as well as Nova Cosmetics, okay? Go to lesquisite.com slash Nova Cosmetics and order this palette right now. Look at it. It's beautiful, okay? And also, remember, this Tuesday... Exclusive interview with the one and only Rick Rosa at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. With that being said, I'm out, cousins. Good night, good afternoon, good morning, wherever you are in the world. Bye.